Alright, so I think they're just about done here, so we're going to go and turn that off. And uh, we're going to take a little trip out to the garden. We're going to grab a couple of uh, herbs and stuff that I have grown in the garden. Um, maybe show you a little bit of the garden and how it's doing. Um, some things are doing really good, other things not so much. Kind of has to do with the sun, I think, how much sun some of the stuff's getting. We have half of our garden get pretty shaded for half of the day, so I think that's kind of affecting a lot of the plants and how they're doing. Um, but we'll take a look at that, and then I'm basically just going to cook up some green beans with some oil and stuff like that and uh, snack on them. There, as of right now, we don't have much else growing in the uh, ready for harvest or like ripe or ready for harvest in the garden. Most stuff is um, we have a lot of tomatoes. Tomatoes are starting to form, but they're not red. They're not ready to be picked. So I figured, you know, I'm about to make some green beans. So uh, cook up some green beans. So why not uh, record it and show you uh, what are some things that I do? I guess. Yeah. Anyway, let's head on out there. Anyway, so this is the uh, garden here. So, heading in, we've got like potatoes. We've got we got potatoes. We got like basil kind of growing everywhere. Um, eggplants, peppers. Um, we got zucchini. Maybe some squash in here. This is the zucchini. I think this is the squash. Um, we got a ton of tomatoes, like I said, growing up. These are the beans that I picked from earlier. As you can see, we have a lot of beans kind of like growing here. This is one, but it they seemed a little small, so I figured I'd let them go. This one, I probably could pick. So I'll grab that one now. But I was just out here, and I was um, going through them, and the sun was beating down on me. It was dripping sweat, just plucking the green beans. Um, but like I said, like this area over here is all shade most of the day to pretty much all day. So nothing, all we got is like these weeds here that are growing, which isn't doing so good. I tried to plant some radishes here, but they didn't do so well. They put out some seeds though, so maybe I'll try and collect the seed pods and uh, plant them again. Um, and then this was where the carrots were, but as you can see, like, it's, um, it's only like, midday roughly and from now on like for maybe like an hour or two ago till net um for the rest of the day like they're not going to get any sun so i think they were kind of wilting away not many of them even came up in the first place but then um, what's kind of crazy is in all of our fertilizer or not in all of our uh, compost are these tomato plants so i put the i threw down some compost um when i planted the carrots and when I had these tomatoes plants that kind of came in and decided, you know what, I think I'll grow here instead. So they started growing. And then I have whatever this is. I believe it is some, I believe it is squash, but I'm not really sure. We'll see, I guess. Um, but we had these tomatoes and squash. I kind of decided, you know what, I think, I think I'll take over here. And then same thing kind of happened with my flower garden, which I could show you as well. But I tried to plant a flower garden and a majority of what ended up growing was just tomatoes, which is kind of funny. Um, tomatoes just growing like crazy wherever. Um, a lot of this here was also supposed to be carrots, didn't really work out. I'm not sure exactly what's planted in here, but um, as you can see we got a bunch of tomatoes kind of clumping up. Some horseradish and asparagus that's here. It's kind of just growing rogue, doing whatever it wants. This is my little herb garden that I planted. Some things are doing better than others, as you can see. Um, back there, that wilted thing is sage. Um, I'm guessing it maybe just got too much water and just kind of wilted away. Uh, not much I can really do about that now, unfortunately. I just hope it recovers. Um, I had these little pepper, cayenne pepper plants here. Rosemary, thyme tarragon, chives, um, I've been coming through and trying to weed out, there was a bunch of weeds growing in here, like these, all this stuff is weeds, and I kind of lined here, so we got the basil, some dill there, basil in the front, I got a lot of basil, um, probably more basil than I know what to do with, we got the cilantro growing here, um, and then I believe this is parsley that's coming up, I planted a bunch of seeds in here, and the only thing that really seemed to come up was parsley and basil. Um, and then in the back there is oregano. I guess we'll just pluck a little bit of stuff here. 
and uh, bring it inside so we have some fresh herbs for our uh, to go with our um, uh, uh, green beans yes that's what they are the green beans so we'll go ahead and grab some of that and then we'll go back inside so we're over at the sink here and I'm just gonna rinse all this stuff off for a quick rinse Now that everything's been uh, rinsed off, we're going to go ahead and um, chop everything up and get it ready to throw into the pan, which we also got to get out the pan. I'm no ace chef, I'm just kind of winging it really. But, you know, overall that's kind of the goal of this uh, thing, basically just have a nice, least flavored and seasoned green bean snack. <laughs> Um, might be a lot of effort for just some green beans, but I don't know. It's something I like to do and I decided I want to show you guys because, you know, there's so many things that you can do and I think that it's so cool to just do things and make things yourself and I uh, am trying to do it more and I want to encourage other people to try and do it more, like making videos and stuff like that. Like, this is another thing. I'm kind of doing a two for one right now where it's like I'm making this video and... In, being the one that makes the video gives it more value even if to no one else to yourself and just posting on youtube is just kind of um so hey maybe someone else can enjoy this content as well um but it's really more the making process is what it's all about um for me i have multiple other projects which if i haven't shown them to you yet i i hope to show you where i like the process itself is tedious and it's kind of boring maybe but um, the end result is just something that you really, you can't ignore, you know, it's just, a, it's a great feeling to be like, I made this, this, I'm proud of it, and it's here, you know, it lasts. Um, kind of in the past, I played a lot of, um, video games, and I loved playing in video games, and like, there's video games where like, you can build things, and you can do stuff, like, uh, in Minecraft, you can build your own town, build your own, um, farm and all this stuff and make all these great things and I love doing that but then I realized I could be doing things like this in real life and then when I want to use them they're actually there I don't have to turn on my computer to go um, experience what I've made I can just look around my room and it's there and that kind of feeling I really just think that that's something that like we need a little more of you know a lot of people play video games for the challenge because it's exciting um, and I feel like we've kind of forgotten that we can literally do this in real life. We can challenge ourselves in real life. There's so many things that you can do with honestly not really a lot of money that are challenging, enjoyable, and you end up with this end product that it's, you know, it's something you can kind of be proud of. Um, when you walk up to a person, you say, I'm really good at said video game. You know, it's impressive, but what do you have to show for it? If you can say... I can build a house or I know how to build a shed that is something that's really incredible because you can use that in real life you know you can do something with that um, beyond like the scope of a computer and I, while there's definitely um, like you can do things being good at video games and it can you can learn good skills with it I just think that being able to do something hands-on like say there was no more computers there was no more um stuff like that you still have something it's not all gone you know um and that's kind of a thing that i think about like right now we're living in a world that's a little uncertain and um you know i'd hate to be the person that's sitting there going without power i'm nothing you know if without electricity without the internet without technology like i'm nothing I would much rather be the person that's saying, the power can go out, but I still have plenty to do. You know, um, I think that's something we need to have in our, more in our society. You know, there was a time before electronics and people did live before, you know, and they not only lived, but like enjoyed life before technology. So I think we need to kind of get to a, a balance where we're less reliant on the technology, but we still use it um to benefit us you know so um that kind of was a random tangent while i'm trying to cook some green beans here but i just wanted to kind of get that out there so anyway all right so there's the pan and i'm gonna throw everything into my little uh composter pot here 
um, so that we're not just wasting uh, anything. Um, and I will say that another thing about uh, this that I enjoy is the whole fact that, you know, during this process, um, like the whole process of doing and creating your own things is there is, a, we have a lot more like power than we realize in the world in the sense that you can create anything you want, um, you know, any world that you want to live in, you can create it through stories and through, um, through your actions, you know, if you want to live in this beautiful house, realistically, you can learn how to and make that house, you know, you have the power to do that, and I think that that kind of creativity and the ability to write your own stories and create your own realities through the work of writing and creating um, books, stories, like films, anything like that, you know, that kind of creative power, I feel like we kind of have forgotten about, but we have a lot more power than we realize, you know, that ability to create is truly incredible when you think about it, you know, um, in a way, you're the, you're, you're a god, you know, of the universe that you create, and not that you're an all-powerful being in this world, necessarily, but you are in, in the sense that you choose how that world interacts, you know, like, you choose where the story goes, and that kind of power is something that I feel like gets overlooked with when it comes to things like writing and stuff like that. And that's why I really want to encourage people to take more advantage of that because it's really incredible how we can interact with the world we live in and create pretty much anything we want so long as we put our minds to it. And that's something that I want to encourage more people to do because, like I said, I'm just blown away by the whole premise of it really it's truly incredible the whole world itself is incredible when you really look at, take a step back and take a look at it which is another thing um just there's so many so many things that i'm um that i want people to kind of take more notice of but you know when you're doing things like this it's a slower process but when you kind of take the step back and you look at it and you you kind of realize how beautiful the monotonous task is and how um taking time to slow down and stop scrolling through feeds and stuff and just trying to get as much um, into your brain as possible and you just take a minute to slow down and there's really no rush to finishing you know you don't need anything right away um, so you can kind of take the time to slow down and realize just how incredible everything in the world really is you know like the fact that like this green bean alone like how it gets created and the fact that like it's it's a thing you know that's just incredible like to think that anything is really a thing in the first place at all is just really an astounding thing to think about and maybe you may think definitely not but personally um I think it is, and a lot of the stuff that I'm saying right now, I'm probably going to try and cover in just straight up talks uh, into the camera, and whether or not anyone really listens to them isn't really the point of me saying them, I just, I have all these thoughts and I want to get them out there, and I want other people to start thinking about this kind of stuff as well, because I truly think that it's beneficial for everyone, and I want everyone to kind of benefit, you know. Um, Maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to make everyone believe what I believe because I believe it's right. I want everyone to believe what I believe because they believe it's right. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense, but I want to kind of show my side of the story and let people kind of make their own decision on whether or not what I believe is true. And, you know, I think it's hard to look at the world we live in, regardless of all the suffering and everything that's going on, and say... No, this isn't spectacular. No, there's nothing uh, incredible about this. You know, because regardless of all the suffering, there is countless amounts of beauty and wonder in the world. Just like how everything interacts and goes on. It's truly incredible. And I'm kind of ranting over and over about saying pretty much the same thing. But it's just because it's true. And I don't know. I feel like more people need to realize that because... Uh, mental illness and depression and all that stuff is on the rise and everyone is struggling to kind of find purpose and when you just look around you see how beautiful the world is 
and how even the smallest little details are incredible it puts a lot more value in the world and a lot more value in your life and i think it definitely makes it easier to keep going anyway let's move on over to the pan dump all this in boom to the pan all right here's our chopped up green beans going on in And so we'll just kind of kick that in to high gear, turn that on, and give it a little shimmy, little shake, spread the oil around, and that's going to heat up. Yeah, I think a big thing with life is everyone just needs to slow down a little bit. Things move a little fast and it gets out of control and people lose their grasp on reality. And if you just take a minute to stop, breathe, and look around, I think it helps a lot. I think it helps everyone out um, to just kind of take a step back and go, uh, you know, breathe out, look around. Because it, nowadays, everything is so serious, and everything's the end of the world, and there's so much going on all at once. And, you know, when you take a step back and you look at it, um, it kind of takes away some of that fear, you know, it's not really the end of the world and everything's going to be alright. Relatively speaking, of course, I'm not saying that the world's going to be perfect, I'm not saying that your life's perfect, but, you know, even if you end up dying tomorrow, what is that even really, like, what's the real fear in that about, you know? Because everyone's going to die eventually. You know, obviously you don't want to die today, but what's so bad about dying today compared to tomorrow? At the end of the day, it's just about making the most of the moment. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Turn it down. Oops. Yeah, so we need to turn it down a little bit. They heat it up, so we don't want to cook them too fast. spatula to help mix things up. And everything. Cut the basil leaves kind of large and the chive. Uh, chives kind of large as well. And then, and then I just kind of hand ripped up some of the smaller stuff. Um, because it's going to shrink down once I throw it in here anyway. And I'm just going to push it all together here. And it may seem like I know what I'm doing, or it may seem like I think I know what I'm doing, but I don't. I'm just kind of winging it here, you know. So whether or not I'm doing this right or the proper method, I don't know. And really, I don't care. Cause it's really all about having fun and experimenting. So whether or not I'm doing a, a good job of cooking here isn't really the point. And if I do a bad job, then I know, hey, don't do this next time, you know? And some, it's, that's another thing I think a lot of people are afraid of is failure. But failure is a big part of life and it's something we shouldn't really be so shy of because having failure in your life allows you to, reali um, to realize what does and doesn't work. And, brings about change and better ways of doing things because you know if we just decided oh we failed and um walked away then we would not be where we are today um and it's really all about messing up and then realizing why we messed up and changing things to make to get a better result is what life is really all about so 
I encourage people to kind of make the mistakes and learn from them. Not just making them, it's, it's the big thing is learning from your mistakes. Um, and that's kind of how you change what you are and what you do. Hey, wow. That was great. So great. No need to overhype yeah, it. It was alright. Fair enough. Why don't we go this way, guys? What's over there? Probably another video. Let's I'll go see. then. I'm in.